Chapter 31 The Tenth Plague Part 4 Unleavened Bread Exodus chapter 12 verses 18 to 20 In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Ye shall eat nothing leavened, in all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Exodus chapter 12, verses 18 to 20. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, or Mazoth, is easily understood. For seven days unleavened bread was to be eaten, and no leaven or yeast in any form was to be kept in the house. Violation of this law meant that one would be cut off from the people. In this context, this means excommunication. A common evangelical interpretation of leaven is that it means sin. This is clearly wrong and absurd. Leviticus 7 verse 13 requires an offering of leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of one's peace offerings. If the Scofieldian interpretation of leaven as sin is right, this means that God requires an offering of sin. Leaven represents man's work, which is temporal and corruptible, that is, it passes away. All the same, our work, our service to the Lord is required by him. In sacrifices related to atonement, man contributes nothing, and hence a leavened offering means a belief that we have a hand in our own salvation. Those who did not share in the faith, but were in the same land as the believers, were required to abstain from all leaven during the week. The premise was this. We are not allowed to share in the advantages of life among God's people, and yet manifest disrespect for their faith. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 3, we have a reference to unleavened bread, which is important. Thou shalt eat no unleavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. Unleavened bread is called the bread of affliction, not because of any imagined bitter taste. The Hebrew word used and translated as affliction means depression with a hint of self-affliction. The explanation for this is, For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, from long-established houses, they were going into tents in the wilderness. From a stationary existence, they were moving into a nomadic one. This meant discarding some possessions and securing others. While the goal was freedom, the process was not an easy one. It was a venture of faith, a move from a stable situation of bondage into the risks of freedom. This responsibility was thus an affliction, as freedom and responsibility always are, but an affliction that alone opens the door to future blessings. No man can be blessed without first eating the bread of affliction. Edersheim wrote, The Passover, therefore, was not so much the remembrance of Israel's bondage as of Israel's deliverance from that bondage and the bread which had originally been that of affliction because of haste now became, as it were, the bread of a new state of existence. There is a reference to the Feast of Unleavened Bread and of separation to the Lord, not only in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, but also in Isaiah chapter 52, verses 9 to 12. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem.
The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean, that spare the vessels of the Lord. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward. Isaiah tells us that our exoduses in history from captivity into God's freedom will not be in haste, nor by flight, but with triumph. His verses are crowded with reference to the original Exodus. In Exodus chapter 23, verses 14 to 17, the law of the covenant requires the observance by all males of three feasts, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Harvest or of the first fruits, and the Feast of Ingathering or Harvest. The second and third feasts stress harvests, results. The first, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, points to the beginning of all godly results and consequences. The venture of freedom, of going forth in godly freedom and responsibility. There is no harvest without risk. Slavery gives security. Freedom offers risks before results. The Feast of Unleavened Bread cannot be separated from the Passover. Passover celebrates redemption. The Feast of Unleavened Bread means a total reliance on God's work for salvation. The meaning of the Unleavened Bread is that God declares, He shall be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44, Exodus chapter 19 verse 6, Leviticus chapter 19 verse 2, chapter 20 verse 7, verse 26, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. In the later history of Israel, on the day before the feast, the father, with a lighted candle, led the children in a search throughout all the house for leaven. Paul refers to this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Food has a place in all religions, and no culture exists in which all things are edible without restriction. Food makes life possible, and cannot exist without food. This obvious fact is lost sight of in modern cultures where food is abundant and is taken for granted. During the student demonstrations of the 1960s, a girl in Berkeley, California, in a rally to further the goal of a work-free world, work being seen as a capitalistic deception, was asked by a reporter, but what about the production of food? Her lordly and disdainful reply was simply, Food is. Such an attitude is humanism gone mad. The biblical festivals are food related. They require of us a recognition of our dependence on God for all things, from our daily bread to our redemption. They stress the fact that we are creatures, dependent creatures, and we need food to live, and we need one another. Supremely, we need the Lord. Paul tells us that's to put off the old man and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind means honesty towards our neighbour and living with our brethren as members one of another. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 to 25. Our Lord declares, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Compare Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Especially in an era of humanism, fallen man prefers to stress mystical or rationalistic abstractions as the meaning of his religious rituals. Scripture stresses our need and dependence. 
No more than we can live without food and water can we endure as men and nations without the Lord. From one end of the Bible to the other, most of the required rites are food-based. Without food, material and spiritual, men and nations cannot live. Unleavened bread reminds us that both the provision and the very fact of life represent the creating and regenerating power, mercy and salvation of our Lord.